can't I just undo the rotation and search in a normal way? Well, you can, but then you will lose out on a lot of time just trying to undo the rotations. We will try to solve this problem using a modified version of the binary search in the rotated array itself. Hello friends, welcome back to study algorithms, a place where I simplify programming for you with animations, visuals and some really easy to understand examples. Today we would be solving a problem on lead code. The problem is search in a sorted rotated array. First, I will explain you the problem statement and show you some sample test cases. Next, we will try to solve the problem and see what limitations we may run across. Going forward, we will see an efficient solution to the problem followed by a dry run of the code. So without further ado, let's get started. The best way to understand a problem is to understand the given sample test cases. As per the problem, it is pretty straightforward. You are given an array that has some sorted integers, but the catch here is that this array has been rotated by an unknown number of times. And in this array, you need to find a target value. If you can find that value, return the index, else just return a minus one. So you can assume that your initial array was something like but this array has been rotated and you do not know how many times it has been rotated. After rotation, this becomes like this. And in this array, you need to find out if zero exists or not. If it does, in this case, zero exists at index number four. So your answer would be four. In test case number two, you need to find if three exists in the array. You cannot find out 3 anywhere in this array, right? So in this case, you need to return a minus 1 because you were unable to find out the element, right? In a test case number 3, you have just a single element in an array. That is also a valid test case, right? Because there is just one element and it has been rotated any number of times. The array would still remain the same, right? And you're trying to find 0 in the array. You can't find it, right? So once again, your answer would be minus one. If you understand the problem better now, feel free to try out the solution on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. A good developer always tries to come up with a brute force solution first. That is because a brute force solution ensures that a solution to a problem exists. So how would the brute force solution to this problem look like? I have this array. This array is sorted but as you can see, it has been rotated by some amount of times. Now, we don't know how many times it has been rotated. One way to solve this problem would be, I can simply unrotate this array. So when I unrotate this array, this would become something like, now my array is a normal sorted array and there are no rotations. If you have to search for the number seven in this, you can easily apply the binary search algorithm and come up with an answer. And voila, you just solved the question. But do you see the problem with this approach? You could say that, hey, I was able to find out my number in order of login because of binary search. But we are also unrotating the array and unrotating the array takes up an order of n time. In this case, the actual time complexity of this solution turns out to be order of n. In that case, you might as well just do a linear search and iterate over the entire array and that would be faster, right? So intuitively, if your array is very large, then your time will increase. And we are never taking any advantage of the fact that this array is already sorted. So what can we do about it? Let us try to solve this problem using a binary search. We know that we cannot apply binary search directly on this array, right? Because it has been rotated. But can we find out the pivot using binary search? I think we can. What is the speciality of this pivot element? If you see the pivot element, the element to the left of pivot and the element to the right of pivot, they both will be greater, right? You can see that none of the other elements in this array have this property. Using this property, what you can do is you can try to search for a number in the array that has the left element greater and the right element greater. So you would be able to narrow down the pivot element. Once you have narrowed down the pivot element, what simply happens is you have 
divided the array into two parts. One part would be the right array and the other part would be the left sub array. If you look closely, both of these arrays are now sorted and it is very easy to apply the binary search algorithm in a sorted array, right? So given the target element 7, you can just look at the first element. You see that 7 is smaller than 9. So you won't find it out in this sub array, correct? And you can apply the binary search algorithm in your second array because 0 is less than 7. And hence, there is a chance that you might find 7 in this sub array. If you apply binary search on this sub array, ultimately you will find the element 7 and then simply you can return its index. In this approach, we take a order of log n time to find the pivot element and then we again take a order of log n time to search our target element in the sub array. So hey, that is a very good time complexity. And ideally, you were able to solve this problem in an order of log n time complexity. This solution is good. But can you even further improve it? Over here, we are applying binary search two times. First, to find out the pivot element and then once again to find out the target element in our subarray. Could we just apply binary search on the original array itself and somehow arrive at our answer? Let us see how we can do that. I call this method the modified binary search. But before actually diving into the solution, let us try to understand what happens when you do a binary search. Whenever you do a binary search, you are separating the original problem statement into two halves, right? You can also check out my video on binary search in case you want to brush up your skills. So we are always separating the array into two halves, right? And then based upon some condition, we discard one of them and we are ultimately left with just one half, right? So why not we try to apply a similar technique on this problem? What happens when I, let's say, divide this array into this half? This would give me two halves of the array, right? A left sub array and a right sub array. Let us see how do they look. So you see, I have divided the problem into a left sub array and a right sub array. The beautiful part of this problem is that the array is sorted. So, no matter wherever you divide the array, you will always get one array that is sorted in itself and other array that is unsorted. If you look at the right sub array, this is a sorted array, right? So, if your target value is between 2 and 7, then you can simply apply the binary search on this sub array, right? And you will be able to arrive at your solution, correct? However, if you don't find a target value in this half, let's say I was trying to search for the number 9 in my array, correct? So then I'm remaining with my left sub array. If you look at the left sub array, I know that we have divided it, but it still remains a sorted array that has been rotated by some number of times, right? So once again, if I divide this array into two parts, let us see what do the two parts look like. If you see again, I have a left sub array that is sorted and a right sub array that is not sorted. Once again, you can check your target value if it lies between 8 and 10. If yes, you can simply apply binary search on this half. Else, once again, what you can do is you are left with a right sub array. Now, I think you are getting the idea. You can again recurse over this array and again divide it into two. At every iteration, you will be able to discard one half of the array in which you can't find your solution. So, using a recursion based algorithmic paradigm, you can apply a modified version of the binary search to ultimately arrive at your solution. Let's say for instance, even at this moment, we weren't searching for 9 and let's say we were searching for 11. What would happen is you would again divide this array into two parts and you would get 11 as one half of the array and 0, 1 as the other half. And you will be able to ultimately tell if you could find or not find the number in the array. The time complexity of this solution would just be order of log n.
That is because we are just dividing the array in two halves and then again applying the binary search on one of the sub arrays. If this solution is now clear to you, let us do a dry run of the code and see how it works. To understand the dry run, I am taking a sample array and I am trying to search for the target element 8 in this array. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement a modified binary search. The array is passed in a parameter. You have the target value also passing in as a parameter. The value of left is the starting point of the array. In this case, it would be 0. And the value of right would be the ending point of the array. Since you are just starting the loop, the value of right would be equivalent to the length of the array. So in this case, the value of left is 0 and the value of right is 9 that are pointing to each of the indices. Next, we have our terminating condition if we are unable to find out the element. Going ahead, I try to find out my middle value. Now, the middle value is left plus right divided by 2, right? Because we are bisecting the array into half. So, right now, the value of mid would turn out to be 4. That means we are dividing the array into two halves, right over here. Next, you check if your left half is sorted. In a rotated array, if the first element is smaller than the last element of a subarray, that means this subarray is sorted, right? So you would see if 7 is smaller than 1. It is not, right? That means this left subarray is not sorted. So we skip this and we immediately go in our else part. That means our right subarray is sorted. And as you can see, 2 is less than 6. So this right subarray is sorted. Now we will try to find out our target element in this part. The value of target element is 8. So I check if is my key in the right half since 2 is also less than 8 and 6 is also less than 8. That means I won't be able to find out my key in the right subarray. And hence what I do is I simply recurse. And I would recurse in my left subarray. So I call the same function again with the same array and the same target value. The left value is also same because we are searching in the left subarray. But this time my value of right becomes mid minus 1. So I recurse this array with the value of right as 4 minus 1 that is 3. So that means I would be only looking in this part of the array. Right? Once again, if you see my recursion starts, I would try to find out the middle value. In this case, 0 plus 3, that would come out to be 2. That means we are bisecting over here. And once again, we would see if my left half is sorted or right half is sorted. So this time, the left half is sorted and we will try to find out my target value in this half. This loop will go on and ultimately we will be able to find out that yes, 8 exists in an array and then you can return the position as its answer. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. This is a very important question that is asked in a lot of interviews and you will find some of its applications in a lot of programming challenges as well. So congrats, you leveled up a little bit. As per my final thoughts, I want you to start thinking what other methods can you come up with? Or rather, what methods did you try and what problems did you face? Were you able to reduce the time complexity even more? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to all the content of this channel is available on the website studyalgorithms.com. So if you are still facing doubts or if you want to read more about this problem, feel free to check out this website. I am including a link in the description below. As always, you can find the sample implementation and the test cases to this problem in my GitHub repo as well, the link to which is again in the description below. Once again. If you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Until then, see ya.